What's going on everybody? Your boy Greg Peters is back. You are watching the Car Passion channel and today another VBT build video. We're just cranking these things out. I think if all goes as planned, I may be able to fire the car up for the first time within about a week or so, okay? So fingers crossed on that. Anyways, today I'll be installing the cooling system on the VBT build, and I've got a couple changes I'll be making versus the previous 1.6 setup. Now, if you're new to the channel, let me go over real quick what I have going on. I've got a Mishimoto radiator in there right now that I've had in the car for 55,000 miles, but it was on the car when I bought it. So it's got unknown miles on it. I had thought about replacing it along the way here but I just never really got around to it but lucky for me Koyo just contacted me recently and they said hey we see the car is coming together nice how would you like to rock one of our new hypercore radiators in the build and I'm like dude your guys timing is perfect so I got hooked up with the Koyo radiator I'll be going over some of the features of that thing dropping it in and doing completely custom cooling hoses on this thing because I've got a coolant reroute I've got a skunk 2 intake manifold now which has different dimensions versus stock I've got a modified coolant inlet to the block. A lot of things are changed. So the entire cooling system as far as hoses, it's gonna be all DIY. I'm gonna try to get it all figured out today. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we've got the two radiators next to each other and the first thing I noticed taking this coil out of the box is the core itself is a lot more dense with fins and that is one of the performance features that they list. Now a lot of the big Miata racing companies subscribe to the theory that you don't just need a thicker core radiator, you need a core that's efficient. So this coil, just by looking at it and by taking some measurements and counting the fins, it's got 20% more fins vertically and horizontally over the Mishimoto. So that right there makes me think that it is gonna work really well well. Now, of course, I have not tried it out yet, so I can't really review the performance. That'll be sometime in the future, but just looking at it, looking at the welds on it, this thing is a quality unit. Looking at the top view, you can definitely tell the Mishimoto has more thickness to it. It is a 50 millimeter core, where the Koyo is a 36 millimeter core. But like I said, with a core that's more efficient, it shouldn't be any issue as far as cooling capacity. So these Koyos are TIG welded by hand. They're actually manufactured by Koyo, so there's a lot of quality control going on there. I mean, you can just tell it's a quality unit by holding it, looking at the welds. It's got a 1 8 NPT port on top here, so you can run a coolant temperature sensor without having to tap into any cooling lines. You can run your stock fans. I'm actually just gonna keep the Mishimoto fan set up because it was working fine when I pulled it and it does bolt directly onto this as well. Now having a thinner core means it's also a little lighter than the Mishimoto by about three pounds. Not a big deal, but I figure someone would ask, so there's that Snapple fact. Koyo does make these radiators for the NA, NB, NC, and ND, so if you wanna check one out, koyorad.com. Tell them I sent you. give me some of those brownie points. Let's get this thing dropped in. Side note, I am trying to run one fan at first. Really, one fan should be able to keep the car cool at idle, especially with no AC. And when you're moving, especially on track, you wanna get as much airflow through the radiator as possible. So a fan, to me, I think kinda of seems like sort of a blockage. And the fans don't really do anything when you're at speed. You're relying on the airflow to go through the car. So I'm trying to run one fan, see how it goes. If not, I can always add the second one back in. And just like stock, sweet. I'll start with the bottom. Now I am keeping my heater core because um, I'm kind of a baby and I need my heater. Uh, I mean, it's to cool the car down at the track, bro. Anyways. I don't have a provision for a heater core line off of my modified uh, inlet housing there. And then you can see it's gotta be connected down there to the bottom of the radiator, factory location. So I have to run a bit of a custom line and I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. My lower hose setup is just gonna be an inch and a quarter, 90 degree silicone elbow. Add in an inch and a quarter T that's got a 5 8 coming out of it. This is gonna be for the heater core. And then just another straight piece that's gonna go right to the block feed. There's the, there's the lower hose setup, and I've got my 5 8 heater hose teed off of that, coming up here. Um, I'll probably hook it up with some of those rubber mounting straps to hold it in place here. Definitely wanna keep it far off the manifold to prevent it from getting damaged or dried up and crack over time. Put some kind of protective uh, sheath on it or something right there. 
and then run it directly into the heater core. For the other line, I'm just gonna use the stock hose, obviously not my original hose off the 1.6 because that thing is haggard. I gotta order a new one, but the stock one will work fine there off of the uh, m -Tune reroute. It's in the same location, so that'll work for that. Cleanest routing ever? No, it's, it's really not, but hey, if you wanna do it cleaner, you're more than welcome to do it cleaner on your own car. I just need it to be functional and not melt. So the coolant feed into the back of the motor with the reroute, also very simple. Straight piece of silicone hose, the inline thermostat housing that comes with the M-Tuned reroute, a 90 degree elbow, a little coupler in there. That's how you connect the silicone hoses. Gets hooked up at the reroute, comes out right here to the housing. And then alongside the manifold, and I'll probably end up pinning it somehow just like that. And when you're running a reroute, this is always kind of a PETA. The radiator neck is designed to go to the front of the head there. So I will probably just end up running a 45 degree elbow off the radiator and then hooking it up into this system. Another option is to have your neck modified or angled or relocated somehow over to the side to be more appropriate routing for a reroute, but the way I'm gonna use will work fine, I think. That's how I've always done it. Still got my old trusty Mishimoto overflow tank, which I'm gonna keep rocking until I have a good reason not to. The old stealth routing still works with the Fab 9 intercooler. Just kinda, just kinda tucked away all secret inside the bumper. And to top it all off, a coil rad high pressure radiator cap. You see that Japanese writing, dude? That's street cred right there. All right, fast forward a couple days. Now the cooling system is hooked up 100%. On the left side back there, got a factory heater core hose. And then the right side is the uh, silicone one you saw earlier. And that wrap is actually header wrap. And I'm using that to protect the hose from the heat of the exhaust manifold. So those should be good to go. And then over on this side, there's my 45 degree elbow, which kicks that long hose away from the manifold, clears the throttle body and the throttle cable and everything and then it goes back there. And then I got my overflow tank all hooked up, and the hose just wraps around, goes right underneath, super stealth. This thing's actually starting to look a lot more complete, and we're, we're getting close. We're gonna be firing this thing in no time. So that's an overview of the cooling system on the Turbo Miata. Now everything I talked about in this video from the radiator, the DIY hoses, all that stuff, you will find more information on if you follow the link in the description, thecarpassionchannel.com slash VVT cooling system. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you learned something. Subscribe if you are new and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Back, back, back from the dead.